it's the next level. See for yourself. Wait, who said that? It was that ghost? Oh, damn. Hey, would somebody turn me around? We messed up my entrance. You know, I need to get this thing motorized. Hey! Scott! Scott! Lang? No. Way. Oh, look at you. I know what you're thinking. I've lost weight. Thank you for noticing. But don't worry, I'm not gonna let it go to my head. Hey panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this week we're going to be doing a spoiler full podcast about the third episode. Or is it the third? It's the fourth. Fifth. 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 Oh, okay. Fifth. (laughs) I read it wrong. (laughs) Episode of Marvel's What If. And it's entitled What If Zombies? So, uh, Steve, you want to take us away with that uh, synopsis that we have? Oh yeah, the wonderful synopsis of when the Avengers are infected by a zombie plague, surviving heroes search for a cure. And that's my fault, Mark. I didn't. I had not changed. <laughs> it's okay. Else, so <laughs> it's fun. I'll take. I'll take the hit on that. No, 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 no. It's fine. Yeah. It. It. Well, it's the fifth episode where we're getting pretty far into it too, and mm-hmm. you know, th- this is one that a lot of people I know have been looking forward to including myself, yourself, Mm -hmm. people that we know within the group, within the Zed heads from, Mm -hmm. you know, Jason's pod, you know, what walking dead cast, uh, Patreon. And we all love zombies. And I've been looking forward to this for a long time. So what were your initial thoughts? Uh, you know, just another great episode. They just keep getting better and better. And, uh, you know, I got, I got, I got sucked into the misdirect about Thor being in this one. I even had an image that I had thought was a spoiler image that I put in our post this week. And, and of course I got rid of it after I realized that Thor's not in this one. So, you know, it's one of those things that I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm going to not try to, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to. Try not to, to take I mean, take anything for granted at this point because next week could be anything. It could be you anything, know, all, yeah. It, yeah, the, the screen grabs I saw showed Tony Stark, but who knows if that's what they're actually going to do. Yeah. You know, so, uh, but uh, yeah, though, this one was wild. Uh, I loved I loved it because after the, the, the depressing dark ending of the last one, we kind of get this lighthearted. I, I mean, I hate to say lighthearted when it's zombies and <laughs> our heroes are dead. But, uh, but yeah, we kind of get a, a more humorous episode and. Uh, yeah, so it was great. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Well, my thoughts, I, I just loved it. I've been waiting for this episode since I saw the actual sneak peek last year with the trailer for what we were in for with What If and for the What If series. And I just really have been anticipating this. I really wanted to see this. And I love the nods that that we get from the comic as well as the visualization. You know, honestly, this is a Disney plus Marvel animated show and there's only so much they could do but i think they really did it very well with not as much gore it has that zombie aspect of it so at least kids could watch it i think that's why they had the humor in the movie itself or the show and i really enjoyed that aspect and the fact that you could watch it as a family depending on the age of the child and whoever is actually involved with the uh you know the episode and you know families could watch it together i guess and i I just love the easter eggs and references to the mcu itself which we will go further in within our discussion uh as we talk about this because there's so many that we just do callbacks from from different movies Mm -hmm. yep (laughs) all right so with that we should move into our top fives absolutely Last year, Mr. Stark asked me to join the Avengers. I turned them down, and, and now they're all gone. And I'm still here. In my culture, death is not the end. They are still with us, as long as we do not forget them. Plus, they're not all gone. Me. You still have me. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. I, I forgot. Is it my turn? Go ahead and... 
I think it's my turn to start. Okay, uh, go ahead. Okay. I, I just, I love that opening that we get that kind of same opening from Infinity War where Hulk falls through the, the roof, you know, of the mansion there and he's the whole Thanos is coming. Mm-hmm. Thing. And uh, I love that, you know, not wanting to come, not wanting to come out of Bruce in the fight, just like in the, in the movie was, was great. But then when Ma and his buddies show up, uh, it's a different, <laughs> it's a different Avengers that uh, kind of uh, attack him and they take him out. I mean, they take him out pretty easily using those spells and stuff mm-hmm. and you know iron man just coming right up behind him and just shooting him in the back of the head was just and then whoa just you know it was gruesome without being bloody and and gory yeah you know and i i love seeing uh, like strange and wong doing spells as zombies <laughs> i love the cape coming in to rescue bruce you know the cape Doctor Strange's cape has has become a character yeah. of its own in uh, in the movie and in this this series yeah. uh, a couple of times now. So it, it was really great to see that. And then of course you know Wasp and Spider Man showing up was was just uh, amazing. And Bruce's whole "Don't eat me, don't eat me" uh, thing <laughs> as he's being you know flown through the city, being carried by Spider Man was just great. Yeah, that whole opening was just just really cool. Yeah, it was. Uh, to add on to Wong. And if you remember in Infinity War, what is it, Call Obsidian? He cuts the, the his arm off or his hand off. Mm-hmm. And then in this case, uh, something happens where uh, Wong's head gets cut off at a certain point, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it happens in the opposite. Yeah. Uh, I, I love that. I just love that whole aspect of it. Uh, my thoughts, my number five would be the overall outcome and how it started. I just loved it completely. I loved it. It was during Infinity War that this all happened. So we get Ebony Maw, or as I like to call him, Ebony Naw, after he became a zombie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Ka- we got Call Obsidian. So we get that whole exchange at that point. But also, you know, Banner is found alone in the Sanctum Sanctorum instead of seeing Strange and Wong in the Infinity War like we did in the original movie itself. He's alone. And it's kind of like 28 days later, he's out there in the middle of nothing in Manhattan. And he has to put on the uh, the wardrobe of uh, kind of like what Strange had to do when he was learning to be a mage. And I, I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> it's funny how he tries to Hulk out, but like in the original Infinity War, he can't do it. And he slaps himself to get him to Hulk out. And we, instead of that one where he's in, you know, after Spider-Man saves him, he's smacking him. Oh, come out, come out. And then Hulk goes, no, we get it differently in this case. But it's the same kind of uh, dialogue that we get. And I really enjoyed that because it's a nice callback to that. Uh, then we get, you know, we, we had the Iron Man Repulsor Blast Killing Maw. Now, that came out of Strange's, like, little spell where it comes through. And if you saw, you see three people come out. And just like at the very end of Endgame, when Strange does his little circle things where he brings everybody through a portal... We don't get the people that we saw in Endgame. We literally get Iron Man, Black Panther, Okoye. Oh, no. In in Endgame, we got Cap, Black Panther, and Okoye. I'm getting it mixed up. And then in this case, we get Strange. We get Iron Man. We get Wong. Mm -hmm. And then they're the one that take out Ma and uh, Obsidian. And I thought that was pretty interesting because it's kind of reflective to that, but in a different take. And then, uh, you know, then we get Spider-Man wisping away Banner to safety after Hope helps out with the huge ants that devour those zombies. And I mm. thought that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. I, it makes me think, do those ants turn? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I, unless they're going the same tropes of like, you know, with The Walking Dead or any zombie lore, animals don't go. But then again, that doesn't really discount Train to Bazan when you had a uh, deer that was a zombie. So, <laughs> but the whole beginning I thought was great. I, I thought it was really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so my next one is it was ni- it was nice, and we talked a little bit about this before we started recording. It was nice to have kind of a fun one. Yeah. Uh, after the last week's you know dark and depressing uh, tale, there uh, <laughs> I, I laughed as zombie happy, even as a zombie happy, still going blam. 
Blam. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, I don't know what it means about me that I thought the zombie one was fun, but, uh, you know, that's that's our group. Uh, and again, it's, it's I've talked about it before mm-hmm. with the MCU is that they have this great way of being able to meld the humor and the drama and the action together. Uh, that is always really cool, even though we have this tragic and I'll I'll talk some more about the tragic way some of these heroes end up going out. But it, it was it was nice to have a, a little bit of a lighter, you know, kind of tale. And uh, and the puns from Scott's head were great. <laughs> I, I kept trying to figure out at the very end there when they're going away, somebody bounces off the plane. Hmm. Um, and, yes, and they do. To the, and I, I kept trying to figure out who that was or if that was just some random I'm hoping it's some that, random person because I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, I, I couldn't figure out where he came from. Was he was he hanging on to the plane or or what? No, but, I uh, think a uh, uh, giant woman or zombie giant woman threw that person at the plane. Okay, yeah. that, that may be. I, w- I was really just confused with that part. But yeah, that was my number four. Just the whole mixing of the, the humor and, the, and, and stuff with the tragic events that we got. Cool. Well, uh, my number four would that would be the history of the plague, as it were. Uh, in the comics, this was brought back to Earth from a watcher in from Earth Z dimension. So, uh, as we all know, or if you don't know, the this what if Marvel uh, what if zombies episode is based upon Robert Kirkman's uh, comic through Marvel. It was just after he released uh, the Walking Dead. Marvel approached him. And he did that and created this whole world with the Marvel Universe as when they're becoming zombies. And uh, the Watcher in that particular universe sent out a Centurion from Earth 2149. Then the virus spread within that particular universe. So it's weird because you got a Watcher who sent it in the comic. But for the show adaptation, it was interesting how they did this and they utilized it. They used the quantum realm to spread it from Janet Van Dyne because she was stuck in the quantum realm. So with that, you don't know what's going on within the quantum realm. So apparently there are a lot of diseases, everything from other universes. So she obviously contracted it, bit Hank. Hank was able to go back into his own universe and then, you know, basically infect everybody. He bit Cap on the neck as a little ant (laughs) Mm -hmm. and then that spread it to uh everybody else and but within this particular universe we get all these heroes with all these powers now with and being zombified at that point and i thought that was a, a pretty cool take on it and good adaptation based upon what robert had created within that uh the only difference though within this particular universe in the comic They had a conscience. They were aware. They were able to vocalize. And it was based upon hunger. The hunger. And in this, no, it's just them being typical zombies that we're all used to. Like the Romero-style zombies or the Walking Dead-style zombies. Or even Zombieland kind of zombies. Where they don't have, like, vocal, vocalization. Uh, In Zombieland, they actually did have, like, with the clown... He was kind of formidable at that point with the uh, the mallet and everything. Uh, he was aware. These zombies are aware, and they're aware of their own powers. So I thought that was pretty interesting, the fact that we get that. Yeah. Yeah, it was a cool take on it that they were able to use their powers as zombies. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my next one is is real quick. It's just something I, – this is another one I watched three times again this week. And I just – the images that we get at the end – are so cool and atmospheric and just, you know, some of them are like alternate perspectives of scenes from within the episode. Mm-hmm. And I just like the, the artistic way of that they, that they present those images to us. And I love watching those end credits yeah. every week. Cause it's, they're just so great. Yeah. Uh, that would lead me to my number three. Mm-hmm. And I just love the whole zombie land video montage that Peter Parker did. <laughs> It is it basically Banner's introduction had to survive the zombie apocalypse at that point. And then he uses key references. You got, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the Winter Soldier. You got Sharon Carter. Kurt was in there, too, from Ant-Man. And he's got his X-Con tag mm-hmm. on his uh, uniform, too, still from Ant-Man and the Wasp, if you think. Because they were uh, 
still building that, so we know it's within that time frame. I, I notice how he doesn't wear his mask. Peter doesn't wear the mask from Spider-Man at all because he he doesn't really care who knows who he is because of the zombie mm -hmm. plague. Everybody's right. pretty much dead in his eyes. The video was done in the same vein as when he did his video in the diary for uh, in the beginning of Spider-Man Homecoming. Mm -hmm. When he, you know, catalogs the uh, his adventures during Civil War and how he talks about and how Happy intrudes. But then he kind of references Happy and I forget what it says about Thor. It, it was funny on his shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, it was uh, something like I'm I'm saving myself for Thor yeah, or something, yeah, yeah. something like that. I'm, I'm not single. I'm saving myself so for Thor. Thor. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. thought that was so, cute. I, this was this was in my notes, too. It's the whole video thing that Peter's showing him. And I love the introduction of each each of the characters, yeah. like you said, of Kurt and Happy, you know, Boxer, Driver, uh, the, you know, Sharon, good ju good eulogies, <laughs> you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. And what was it for uh, uh, for? Uh, Winter Soldier. Uh, he's a like, heavy sleeper. <laughs> yeah, heavy sleeper, uh, killer, and robot arm or, or metal arm, yeah, something, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. pretty funny yeah. as hell. And I just love that. Yeah, it's yeah. like it, it had that cute take from Zombieland, which I enjoyed very mm -hmm. much so. So it had the humor within it, but it, it, it pictured, you know, Peter just living his life within it too. And I think it kind of centered on key characters if you think about it hope van dyne you got peter and then there were everybody else like there's kind of a twist of fate within this in comparison to uh the actual comic for marvel zombies with the hulk and i found it very intriguing mm -hmm. so uh we'll we'll get into that more later within my notes but uh okay. your number two my number two is, is just how sad and tragic it was. And we talked a little – how each of the different heroes kind of gets taken out. You already talked about Cap. You know, he gets bit and then he turns into uh, a zombie and, and that's kind of why it spreads so quickly because of their powers. Uh, the Wasps, you know, takes out zombie Stark. Uh, the Ants kind of take take out different things. It looked like the Cape uh, may have killed Strange or, or Wong itself. Oh, wow. Uh, Sharon, you know, gets uh, – <laughs> Gets turned into a zombie by Cap, and then Wasp goes up inside her and uh, blows up. You know, <laughs> Bucky takes out Cap with his own shield. Uh, Hope sacrifices herself, and so does Hulk. I I'm assuming. Well, that we'll Hulk, see. Uh, you know, yeah, we don't know because that's a cliffhanger. Maybe, yeah, he might have survived that Wanda fight between him and Wanda. Um, and you know, Vision of course kills himself by removing the Mind Stone. From his own forehead. Which so. Shadow is pretty much almost like uh, Endgame. Uh, no, not Endgame. Mm -hmm. uh, Infinity War. Infinity War, yeah. Yeah, when, when, when Thanos, Thanos takes it out, out, he turns gray. So mm -hmm. he dies from it. So, But he did yeah. it himself in Sacrifice, which I thought yeah. was pretty cool. Very much similar to what Wanda was doing. Because Vision, at this point, in this particular story, was for his love for Wanda. And trying to keep her and try to save her. But his he went mad scientist on this at this point and i think he realized that towards the end and that's why he helped out in the very end and taking the mind stone out from his head and handing it over because it was a way for them to help out and i thought that was right. pretty cool yeah. yeah and that leads me into my number two which was vision's plan to help wanda and try to save her very much like him during wandavision but in the reversal so, and we already covered that in one, you know, one division. Everybody knows that. So, if you haven't, go back, listen. We had a great time doing it. <laughs> but you know, the the one cool thing they'll ask back out of it, and I'll leave it off at this. He was feeding people to Wanda to still keep, you know, her alive, as it were, and that was very interesting. Uh, you know, it kind of references to something that happened in the comic, but. The uh, the big difference was is Giant Man, who is Hank Pym in the comic, was uh, capturing people and literally keeping them alive, but cutting them and eating them himself. Okay. And we get that reference within this with T'Challa because, uh, and I think T'Challa said, "Oh, I I thought he was trying to save me, but I I think he needed a snack pack or something." <laughs> and uh, in this case, very much like within a comic. T'Challa has no leg, but in the 
in this version he has just no leg but in the comic he has no leg and no uh no right leg and no right arm and mm -hmm. hank was feeding himself and basically keeping him alive so that way he could easily just chow down and continue to live based upon that hunger in this case you know these zombies don't talk and it, it's pretty cool and the difference the fact that you know it was meant for a certain purpose for somebody else not just for themselves, and I thought right. that was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, I had that. You know, the whole thing with between Wanda and Vision, I was a little confused, and I, I think what what I took from it was that he he knew he couldn't cure her necessarily, or maybe he was trying to cure her, but he was really trying to keep her in check because she he knew how powerful she was. That as a zombie, if she <laughs> got out. You know, she could destroy the world. So True. that's kind of what I took from it. But uh, that leads us to my number one, and it's it's another <laughs> another quick one. Uh, that zombie Thanos was a shock, man. <laughs> he's got the he's got the gauntlet on, and you know he's only missing uh, the Mind Stone yep. is the only one he's he's missing. So I kind of hope we do get a continuation within this season, so we can kind of see what happens. And we we already talked a little bit about the misdirect we got yeah. uh, from last week with the Thor. So yeah, I have no idea what we're gonna get next week. Well. It if you think about it, too, Thanos is a man with a plan. He was a man with a plan when he started the Infinity War, when he was going for and creating that gauntlet. Um, in that particular universe for the Infinity War that we know of from the movie, the MCU, he is trying to cut the universe's population in half to save it. So maybe he's going to cut it in half where half of it is zombified and half of it's alive so that they all could feed on each other i don't know this is weird because now we're left on a cliffhanger and we're wondering or does yeah. he want everybody to be zombies and that, i don't know like like i said i don't or like, he could jump no from idea. universe to universe who knows or they might not show us anything oh exactly get, yeah get we can so. only speculate and have fun with this though <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah that leads me to my number one that ending scene where we have banner face off with wanda but this time instead of the, in the comic in the comic hulk uh was actually zombified he was bitten oh okay i don't know if it was i don't remember if it, he was banner at the time or if he was hulk but regardless he still had the hunger just as much uh they chowed down on a lot of people he chowed down on giant man at that point who was hank pym but he still retained his powers uh, they kind of formed a faction where they would actually go after people who were alive and bite them and eat them and, you know, f to fuel their hunger. And and at this point, it seems like when all those zombies were jumping on him, they couldn't penetrate his skin. It, it seemed to me when he was battling Wanda at that point. So I'm mm -hmm. wondering in this yeah. iteration, do we, and in the continuation, if we do get it, because we do know that there's a, a season two will he be immune to this and will be he will he be the uh salvation for uh mankind at that yeah, point we'll have to see it's all i mean it's all I, I know i know the one thing i remember is that when wanda went to bite bruce his arm turned green for a second and she couldn't she couldn't penetrate the skin. Yeah. And so he says something like, thanks, big guy, for the win or, yeah. or something like that. So unless there's a zombie out there that has strong enough teeth to bite through yeah. Hulk's skin, that's yeah. that would be the only thing. Ultron? I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's, all, it's all speculation at this point, yeah. But, uh, but no, Ultron's a robot. Remember Vision said they can't, no, that's they can't true. get into a robot. Yeah, that's, so. that's true, yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, the uh, cool relation to the comic itself, too. Uh, there's one part within a comic that makes me laugh all the time hulk eats a person pretty much almost whole because he, he as he gets angry he gets bigger and he does this the same as he's a zombie and he devours somebody and uh he changes back to banner but the leg is protruding outside his body mm. his stomach because he couldn't Ew. digest him and, go, and they all make a comment and he's like hey you don't have a leg sticking out of your <laughs> your stomach at this point because i couldn't digest him whole because hulk ate him that way i'm still hungry i still have to devour and and i still have the hunger and it's hilarious so if you guys are out there it's available on trade and i do recommend it uh the first two 
trades I highly recommend. The The third one goes a little bit more into a tangent. And then we do get a, uh, a peek at the zombies again in the 2015 version of Secret Wars. So uh, in that one, and I'll go into my notes about this. Uh, I talk about it there, but I'm going to talk about it now. Literally, Doom has within Secret Wars its multiverses. So obviously, he's bringing uh, a lot of people are colliding together. You got the Council of Reeds. You have different people from different universes within the Marvel universe that are interacting that are the same, but have different histories. And within this. On Battleworld, Doctor Doom actually uses the zombies, these zombies, to attack as like a bunch of military or a troop to uh, uh, wane off all the people that are trying to get to him. And I think it's pretty cool. So that's a cool aspect about uh, the Secret Wars when they utilize the zombies. And I highly, highly recommend that. The third one goes a little bit more where they... Uh, go into space and at the very end of this episode they talk about going into space to, for salvation at one point but the thing is is that there is no salvation because they wind up in another universe and the zombies come after them but that's the comic and this is a different story by the way but it's cool to have a different uh you know perspective on it and i highly recommend right. everybody go out and read that if they can so a lot of my notes we've already talked about, but let me see uh, what we haven't. Uh, Peter, I love Peter not wanting to split up and, and Okoye uh, <laughs> saying, you know, that, that oh, they don't have horror movies. They have American TV reality instead of horror movies. I thought that was great. Uh, I love the fight between Bucky, uh, Zombie Falcon, and Okoye. Hmm. Uh, when she kills Falcon, you know, she apologizes to Bucky and he says, I should be sad, but I'm not. Uh, and I, <laughs> but... What I think was an interesting callback there is in, you know, in this universe, the events of Falcon and the Winter Soldier would not have happened. So he and Falcon wouldn't necessarily have had a friendship or, or yeah, a relationship, relationship or something. Relationship, yeah. Yeah. As, as they had. So it's, it's, it's kind of, a, I think it's kind of a tongue in cheek kind of uh, reference to Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. The, the fact that, that he says, oh, I, I, I should be sad, but I'm not. Well, you know, it's pretty so. funny how she splits them in half. Kind of like mm -hmm. how Michonne would do, and mm -hmm. we know Denai mm -hmm. Guerrero is uh, Michonne in The Walking Dead, and it's funny yeah. how she does does it. And and then I loved seeing Peter with Doctor Strange's uh, cloak on; that was really great. And then, of course, at the end, with it around Ant Man's head, uh, was another just cool visual for me. Oh well, the thing with Peter with the the cape—that's actually a nod to Spider Man Into the Spider Verse, if you don't mm -hmm. recall, because they go into. Uh, that one Peter Parker's sanctum with Aunt May and they show all the different suits that Peter has as Spider-Man and one has a, a cape and it looks okay. like a lot like that cape, which is so funny. So that's, it's yeah. a good nod to that because uh, it shows like a, a willingness from uh, Disney plus slash Marvel to uh, nod towards Sony's stuff, which is uh, Spider-Man into the universe. And I really enjoyed that. And it just made me laugh because they actually did that in the comic. They did give Peter a cape at one point, even though I think Kirby was highly against it. <laughs> but um, and on top of that, the the head thing with uh, Scott Lang. Can you say Futurama? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, listeners, we have the one Kirk Manley, uh, the guy who actually created the artwork for our podcast right here online right now. And he's going to talk about his moments, his favorite moments on the uh, What If Zombies episode. So, Kirk, take it away. What what were your favorite moments? Thanks. Well, well first of all, welcome to, to both of you. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come on and, and to talk about you know, some of my favorite things in the whole world, which is uh, Marvel uh, comics, Marvel animation, Marvel movies, and zombies. I mean, it doesn't get any any better for for me than that. Yeah, hell like yeah, the, exactly, uh, right? That's the trifecta. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see. So in terms of, uh, you know, first of all, I thought that the episode, in first of all, let me start off by saying I think that the entire What If program so far has been or series has been top-notch 
Um, and I, I, I have no complaints. I mean, I, I certainly like everybody could sit and rate, which has been my favorite, yeah. which was my least favorite, but saying yeah. least favorite is really not fair because I've loved them all. Um, but I think that with each episode, it, it gets harder because I'm like, oh my God, I think that's my favorite episode. <laughs> the next one, oh, no, that's my favorite episode. No, no, that's my favorite. So um, I don't know if they can kind of keep that up for me, but, but I hope so. Um, but I, I think, you know, there was a lot of, um, at least on my part, mm. uh, concern or, or um, skepticism as to how successful, uh, how polished, how uh, integrated with the MCU uh, uh, movie universe would be um, and how successful that all would all be, how the animation <laughs> was really, oh, yeah. you know, biting my nails about the, how the quality of the animation was going to be. And I tell you, I just, uh, I, I don't have any complaints, you know, and it's just been building and building. Um, you know, the Marvel Zombies is, as of right now, my favorite, but... Um, you know, they, I think Guardians of the Galaxy, which was, I believe, the second one. Yeah, with T'Challa. Um, that that just, I think, that's when, I mean, the first one was fantastic in, in that um, all of the introduction to the storytelling and the visuals and the animation and the voices and... Um, and then, of course, the cool twist. But in terms of the twisting of the story, there was very little. It was pretty much the same story, just with different characters changed and different roles yes you know i was like okay that's cool but i don't know and then boy with that second episode we were just blown away they just blew the doors off you know in terms of changing <laughs> everything but you guys have probably already talked about that episode so i won't go into that <laughs> so um in terms of the the this episode you know i heard rumor uh, or i don't know if it's called rumor but there was talk online about the fact that they had to tone it down Oh, um, yeah. originally from its original execution online and or on um in animation and that's probably because they probably stuck more closely originally to the to the books because I don't know if you've both I'm sure you've both read the books but they're pretty dark. Oh, they are very I mean, dark. They are yeah, really, they are really. I mean, they are dark. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Parker eating Mary Jane and, and, uh, and Aunt May. And Aunt right. May, yeah, just is. Uh, it doesn't get much darker than that. And his so, and his leg but, holding um, on by a thread too, a muscle. <laughs> <laughs> some of the best covers uh in a series ever yeah so you know i i think though that 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 was not a bad thing i mean i think that um i think it would have been out of character to say i guess with the rest of the show yeah. if it had been darker so i was actually glad that they kind of stayed more consistent with you know, that was, and, and yet, you know, still told a great zombie story. I mean, there was chumps and chills and thrills and gore and all that stuff. So, yeah. so that, that was the, kind of the first, my first thing that I was, I was kind of happy about. And then another thing that impressed me was the balance of action in this one with quiet moments and quiet moments. I don't mean, you know, um, silence or uh, uh um you know two characters talking I, I mean the the sequence where where wasp grows to giant size in order to carry them across this ocean of zombies mm. was heart-wrenching and a huge uh, an amazingly well done mm -hmm. uh, hero sacrifice yes. for the greater good yeah. moment and it was shot down from above looking up the zombies falling off and the music is just very heart-wrenching and there's this you know sunset quality to the lighting and it was just it was you just i just i found it to be a very just beautiful serene and yet horrif horrifying and sad moment and you know that was a great of all the episodes to date there hasn't been that a balance of that kind of storytelling yeah very there's been you know you know what I yeah mean? it's very so much like the one. walking dead in a sense where they do chilling things like that so many sacrificing yeah. themselves I, I think jason has already right. probably mentioned this on mm -hmm. house podcast yeah. to go with their coverage but uh <laughs> they they are covering the same thing which is amazing but i i feel the same way well i think it's a it's a it 
it's an important part of the zombie movie trope. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, one person got the, sacrifice. You've got this, yeah. You've got the selfish people or the selfish characters who actually sacrifice other people to protect themselves or to save themselves. And then you've got these, you know, heroic moments of people willing to throw their life, you know, aside in order for the greater good or for the larger group. And, um, you know, I think it's an important part of the zombie story. Yes. And, and, um, and that they, they didn't miss that. They didn't, you know, they saw that that's an important thing that needed to be done here. You know, um, there were a lot of sacrifices that, you know, I mean, we, in, ter in terms of the darkness issue, which I brought up at the beginning, you know, compared to the movies. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're losing heroes left and right every episode. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That is true. <laughs> You know, and and uh, I guess you know, being animated, it uh, uh, you know, it, it allows them some some room to do that, and, and doing the multiverse gives them the room to do that too. But uh, yeah, you know, but that, that's that feels very real to the comic for me. You know, in the comic book treatments, you know, whereas in the MCU there right, tends right. to be a higher survival rate all the time. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think they changed you know? it with this uh, a lot, in yeah. a sense, and. They yeah. change a lot of universes too, and whether or not they collide within the actual MCU, we will see. For the fact that we got Doctor yeah. Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, we got Spider Man No Way Home coming out, and that's going to be affected yeah. as well. And I wouldn't be surprised yeah. later on within the MCU, because with that, maybe we'll get mutants. I, I, I don't think that. Uh, the Eternals are going to be the ones that are going to be bringing in mutants. I think this multiverse will, but that's just my thoughts. Yeah, I think that I think that's a great, good point and a good observation. I, I think we were being led to believe that that was what it, that the Eternals were going to somehow, you know, be the catalyst for that. But uh, no, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be more wrapped up in the uh, the multiverse, and I don't know if it's going to be um, a a alternate universe that merges or they, they those characters come over from it and become part of you know th this universe mm. or whether um something's going to happen like wanda but my, my if i had to guess i'm going to guess that the scarlet witch will fulfill what she you know mm. her storyline from the comics only in reverse yes uh, instead of no and more instead, mutants right. it's all mutants yeah correct yeah. correct and um you know and so she you know she, she i think that's a very high possibility but yeah i think also you know i'm i would not be surprised especially since i've read quotes from kevin Feige that that the mm -hmm. animated yeah. what if yeah. stories are canon oh awesome so those characters can jump over yeah if they choose, and and there is again more scuttle online yes. about yeah, I've heard at least um, Captain Carter, for sure. Oh yes, being somebody who's going to show up, yeah. right? And I would not be surprised if the Doctor Strange that was left alive and trapped in his isolated, mm -hmm. dark little cube in his universe, yep. isn't going to come back as well. And and you know, there's something very odd about the. Doctor Strange in the preview for No Way Home. Mm. Yeah, there are some he's things a that off. people say. Oh, he's Mephisto. Yeah, he's a little off. He agrees to do things he wouldn't normally do. Um, he, he seems very cavalier about uh, taking risk. Uh, he's wearing the Time Stone. Uh, you know, there's there's just weird, uh, hmm. some weird kind of stuff going on there. And um, you know, that could just be a, a misdirect. But I wonder if he isn't a replaced version. Yeah. Oh, or Strange some... Supreme replaced yeah. the Doctor Strange from our universe. That would be interesting. That would be cool. Correct. Because no Doctor Strange showed up in WandaVision. Wanda was ripping the fabric of reality to pieces. Mm -hmm. And reformulating an, um, her own world as she wanted to and manipulating mm -hmm. all these people and using magic right. constantly. Right. Yeah. There's no way he would not have come. And I think yeah. they put out a whole thing about how they didn't want to steal her thunder. They didn't want him to become the, you know, the, the protector. And, and instead, you know, she needed to solve this problem on her own. And, and, and that all makes good sense in storytelling. And I agree with that. I'm glad that's how it went. Yeah. But I think they pulled him from it because they realized 
they wanted to go this direction with him. Mm -hmm. And for that to happen, right, there needs right. to be evidence of him having not been around. Mm, which makes you know sense. I mean? Un unfortunately, we they did re CG some stuff where think, they show strange coming in. You think it's strange? You think it's strange? At, 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 at the sure. very end, but yeah, they think yeah, it is. Yeah, but exactly. Could be something else, but you know, a lot of yeah. people are speculating about that. To me, I just leave it as what I remembered initially from the first viewing, and I try to keep it that <laughs> right. way. Uh, right. Yeah, whatever comes, whatever it may. I'll I'll enjoy because it is all yeah. Marvel and these are the yeah, things that exactly, I grew up with exactly. just like you did Kirk as well as Steve. Yeah, amen. <laughs> so what amen. what about what, were there any, still growing uh, up. any other shocking yeah, I think we all are. <laughs> for you from this from this episode that really stood out? Steve, I got to ask before I answer your question. Uh, uh, is that a is yes, that a green screen that background? Is... <laughs> no, he's out with yeah, Hulk. Thought, Hulk Hulk's out. Say, maybe, he's out in the forest. Maybe you're out in California. No, no. I'm, uh, I'm in Oklahoma. Really That's nice actually an image uh, from North Africa, uh, where the goats actually climb up into trees to eat the the, oh, the tree excellent. nuts. Uh, and and so yeah. So that's what that picture is. You don't yeah, want to see I've what my actual room looks like. Guy. I've seen documentaries that had them in it. Yeah, mine's okay. disheveled, so as you all guys know. So it's okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's all good. You're seeing mine, so I don't need to say anything more. than. Well, you're an artist. Everything's all over the place. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just like inside my head. Yeah. Um, well, you came up with great in work. In terms so. of other things that stood out, in terms of other things that stood out for me, Steve, um, you know, I love seeing um, some of the secondary uh, or second tier characters have much broader parts, bigger stage. Yes. You know, um, to the fact that we, you know, we got to see a Koyo and. Uh, um, yeah. Hope. You know, Sharon uh, Carter. Yeah. Hope. Hope. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, Sharon Carter, exactly. Even Bucky. I mean, you know, even though he's been, other than Winter Soldier, he, you know, he's really been kind of like a side character, you know. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I think that's, uh, that was a standout. And, and uh, uh, I really enjoy seeing that because I think those, the thing that's been great about Marvel is that they have not... Um, sacrificed those roles and that level mm -hmm. of character uh just mm -hmm. to get you know the biggest possible name for their lead or you know instead their storytelling is you know all wrapped up in all of the characters and and they therefore go and get good people to do these roles and you just want to see more so that that's been a great benefit of the what if series i think uh, another one would be just th the level of animation. Again, uh, you know, one of my biggest reservations and concerns was how would the animation be handled? And, um, you know, animation has come a long way. I don't know if you guys watch much manga or, or yeah. not manga, but uh, anime. And, uh, you know, there's there's been a growing integration of traditional 2D illustration with CG generated 3D illustration. And a lot of the times it doesn't mm -hmm. work. You know, you get this nice 2D art uh, with the characters and they're interacting and some of the environments are painted 2D and they're beautiful in the background. And then they bring mm -hmm. in this, you know, tank or right. this robot or something and it's CG'd <laughs> and it looks CG'd yeah. and it's like, that is just not working, you know? And They've exactly. done a really yeah. good job in integrating this. You can sometimes kind of tell that they're CG, but it's hard to know. And maybe it's all CG. I wouldn't be surprised if it's all been done digitally and that, but they're working hard, you know, just like they did with, um, I don't mean they as in Marvel, mm -hmm. but just like the animators did in, in Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse is just oh, yeah. fantastic, but they created... It's an amazing... They created an entire animation program to comic book fi it and to defy it and give it zip tone and you know all these things that um just made it look right. like it was a an actual comic book brought to life um yeah. and yeah. yeah and i'm just i'm just happy like with spider ham yeah, yeah exactly Sp spider ham if you look at how he integrates with all those yeah. other images of how they are he is very different yeah. in comparison and I really enjoyed yeah. that aspect. 
I kind of made the joke uh, a couple of episodes ago when we were podcasting how uh, I-, I guess somebody really got feet right because Rob Liefeld could really never draw feet. <laughs> well, he, along and with, he did, uh, and whoever along with did many the, other things that he couldn't draw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Captain Carter, it's like, oh, they sure uh, – I was like, oh, wow, they could draw toes and feet. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> so I'm sure Rob Liefeld would probably be like, you, yeah, I well. hate you. But that's been an ongoing joke, obviously, within the comic community, and he embraces it, though. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I mean that's that's been outstanding, I think. And, and a lot of it is not only the I, – I think the weakest part is in the – dialogue um and the the mouth dialogue lineup i think there's some you can kind of feel like the that's they're not um yeah the, the yeah. cg it's yeah. not like gi joe back in the 80s where it's <laughs> yeah. out of sync yeah. <laughs> it's a little hard I mean, it, it, that's the only place where it's fa- it's falling for yeah. me but um the color i just the, the coloration and the uh it's really brings that comic the shadowing actually the, sh- is the great. shading the shower uh, the shadowing um you know these these large expanse uh um shots like last night they had uh, or it was or um this episode there was one where there i want to say it was it a car and it's a, a a long shot far away you see them traveling and way in the in the background you see the watcher ghosted out you know and mm-hmm. I mean, just yep. mm-hmm. very much like a, a beautiful rendered comic book page. And um, so, yeah, I think mm-hmm. that uh, they've done a really good job with the lighting, with the color, um, with the animation overall. You know, I think there have been a few, the, 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 the mouths sinking oh. up, but then the other was the, the darn tentacles from that creature yeah that that was a perfect example of that cg Mm -hmm. smashing into that 2d looking effect and it just not not feeling like it's in the same environment you know Mm -hmm. so but no it it, two worlds yeah a little bit a little bit too much at that point yeah (laughs) well it takes you what uh what do you feel about that creature how do i feel about that creature is that what you just asked yeah, what do you think that creature is something that we'll see soon that was out of Strange's yeah. universe? Something with an eye? I forget the name there's of a, it. Uh, but, there's uh, a I'm villain. There's a famous villain of his, um, <laughs> and I will screw up the name. Um, I'm sure. <laughs> it's okay. I screw up all names. <laughs> I'm just taking a quick look at it online. Villain. Right, I think I, I think I've heard another Kuma podcast. Kuma Doric or something like that. I think so. Uh, yeah, and it's not. I don't think it's going to be the first or a last time that we'll ever see him. Oh I, no, I think, I think he'll come yeah, into absolutely. The movies at a certain in fact, point. I think we're we're going to see um, yeah. Captain Carter again. Yeah, who jumped through that because yes. she pops out. Yeah, well, pops out at Avengers, yeah. you know, in front of uh, Fury and Hawkeye, and um, so you know, my guess is is that she will use that portal, mm-hmm. which is obviously opening up alternate universes or whatever, to jump around a little bit, and that yeah, may yeah. be how she That'll lands cool. in the MCU live action. I don't know. Yeah, well, we'll she might need to out well again. <laughs> Which will be great. <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's right. Well, there's but a yeah, lot of that, CG I mean, work. That They're already making a the She-Hulk first show. Really connected so. thread we've had <laughs> through two episodes where we had the same, you know, that that same kind of thing. So it's definitely going to come up again. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, we yeah. saw it first in that. Well, that first and the, the second one, one was we see here, was here the Doctor Strange, Strange, right? Same Is that what you're yeah. saying? Creature. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I wouldn't be put a well. He's a famous. He's a fa- in the comics. He's a very prominent villain of Doctor Strange, um, and uh, I apologize that I can't remember the name of okay. it. Um, but um, more importantly, he he's an ancient god mm-hmm. of um, uh, with the you know kind of like Dormammu, mm-hmm. but um, he also wrote the um the book that wanda has there the um what the, oh, heck the is dark that called? hold or what was it called the dark hold yeah right. the dark hold yeah 
Right. In the comics, he is the actual writer of the Dark Lord. Ah, okay. Um, putting down all of his dark magic into the one book. And um, so, you know, it kind of lines up, you know, so they've introduced the Dark Hold, they've shown us a tentacle monster. Um, you know, I, I think it, I'd be shocked if we don't see see that character. Now, whether he'll be the main bad villain, I don't know, but... Um, That'd be cool. But that's a possibility. Yeah. Uh, one criticism... Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, of this episode, I didn't like the fact that it hinged again on Hank Pym. Oh, really? I didn't understand why they would do that. Well, like in um, the comic where Hank Pym was uh, uh, pretty much chopping up T'Challa and eating him. Are you talking about that? Or? Well, that's true. That yeah, well, no, no. I I no, like it. I like yeah. that switch. I, like I get what you're. I get what you're saying. Like we have two episodes here that hinged on something yes. with Hank Pym and with the Pym oh, family. Oh, okay. Yeah, basically. the two two episodes. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. Right. Well, there was the Avenger, the death of the Avengers. Yeah, one, the murder mystery right. where all the Avengers get murdered, and it's him that does it because right. Hope got killed in in a mission for Fury, and he's been on a revenge ever since. Mm. But. Um, it just struck me as kind of odd that now, then here they, they do the whole, you know, Hank Pym going to get Janet Pym yeah. or Janet, whatever, Janet Van Dyme or whatever. And, right. and she brings the virus back. Um, hmm. Right. The only thing I can think of as to why they did that is because they want the virus or the whatever it is that's causing the zombie uh, infection to have come from the quantum zone. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's what I, I mean. I think for but some, he was also the right. creator of everything too. For that's why they got into the right. quantum zone. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that um, for some reason that's important. They, you know, one thing has been clear about the Marvel execution in the Marvel universe is that it's nothing is done without you know some reason. sort of reason. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, we may not see it for years, but. Um, and, you know, one theory I was reading was that they want to do that so that they can, because part of the, the storyline of the Marvel Zomics comics is in the second series, mm -hmm. you know, in the first series, they've basically consumed the entire planet yeah. and yeah. they're, but they're still driven with this hunger. hunger that they can't, right. So they, I, I, I may be getting this slightly wrong, but they, they summon Galactus. Oh, they eat Galactus. And, then they consume, and they it become a hive him. mind at that point too. Yeah. And they and they gain the power cosmic, which allows them to to take themselves to other universes. universes. Yep. And then they just start portaling to other universes and consuming them. And that and that's and, how they leak into the 2015 Secret Wars at that point and become Doom's uh, army at one point on a battle world. Right. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I think they're looking at how how can we set this up so that we could do a Marvel Zombies, mm -hmm. whether it's a TV series, mm -hmm. you know, on Disney Plus or a standalone movie or part of the Secret Wars storyline or whatever. Yeah, um, I, but, uh, yeah I wouldn't be know, surprised so. if that's where the MC is going uh, is going to actually point towards with all these multiverses, because mm -hmm. that's what really stemmed from the 2015 Secret Wars story was all multiverses you got the council of reeds you have doom the the god doom at that point you got everybody working mm -hmm. together that are different mm -hmm. versions of themselves and learning from one of it from each other from their own universe like there i think there was a peter parker that actually had a an uncle ben that was still around and things right, of that nature right. And uh, oddly enough, within this particular episode, it was the first time they actually mentioned Ben Parker in the yeah, MCU, yeah. which was pretty yeah. pivotal for that. Regardless that it didn't look like Tom Holland or sound like him to the most degree. <laughs> but we did get an older version of the, the Spider-Man costume that was from years ago that was in cartoon form. I guess it had to be yeah. a legal issue, and I, I brought it up to Steve earlier, and I thought that was interesting. But I liked it nonetheless. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah, me too, for sure. Um, great to see uh, 
Bucky, you know, wielding the shield full full mm-hmm. force. Oh, I mean, yeah. He's thrown it and used it a couple of <laughs> times. But yeah. And the great callbacks to the lines like, you know, uh, you know, when he, he puts the shield through him. And, and this is the end of the line. And then, <laughs> yeah, this is the line. So, yeah, just some great the trope tip of, of the hats. The too. tip of the hat to the actual MCU Captain America series between Bucky and, yeah. and Steve's uh, yeah. the relationship. And it's like, this is the end of the line. And then he takes the shield. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it's really helped to to have the actual actors. Yes. Um, you know, I, I think their voices have just made it that much easier to fall into this and feel as if it's just a continuation mm. and, and not some sort of aberration, you know? I know, and I talked, I was on with um, Jason when with uh, his podcast, What If Podcast, for the premiere. Yeah. And we talked about how, you know, I didn't feel like the person that did Steve Rogers' voice was spot on. You know, I just thought, and other people did. And, I, I, um, I did so, not look at the credits, so I didn't know. And I was like, it yeah. sounds a lot like him, but I was like, mm, okay. And then Steve corrected me. Yeah. And I was like, wow. That was, you know, for me yeah, not looking, and like, you know. And not having Tom Holland. Just that, oh. that, well, I think stunk. that's a Sony yeah. Marvel thing right there. And <laughs> yeah. I think yeah, the legalities, probably. you know, if all yeah, things, they could always gotten probably. Andrew Garfield. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was, I, I totally agree with you. It was great to hear, like, Denai Guerrera, those, uh, Emily yeah. Camp, those those secondary characters, even them, they're bringing those actors in. Evangeline uh, Lilly. To, yeah. To yeah. Them. yeah, Evangeline Lilly. Evangeline yeah. Lilly, Sebastian Stan. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that the, it's just great. They really thought, you know, it, it, it shows that they've really spent the time and the money to, to you know, to think this thing through and do it properly and not, you know, half-assed. And story-wise, and, um, too, if you think about it. There's a lot of yeah. heart in this particular episode because it's like Hope giving herself up, sacrificing herself – Peter always showing a positivity and explaining that in the end, how he lost his mother, his father, Aunt May and Uncle Ben, you know, and uh, oddly enough, he didn't mention MJ. So I guess MJ kind of died at one point, but, uh, well, I think they're trying to, yeah, they're trying, they're not, they're, yeah, they're, they're being a little coy about that whole thing. I think. Yeah. Um, where, what's going to happen with that from a romantic point of view for him. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. And it was also, you know, no one in the comics they do, but no one in the <laughs> movies yet has no. confront, you know, confronted uh, Spider-Man with, you know, why are you always so chipper and so cheery? Now, I think, you mm-hmm. know, realistically, we've only seen – he's only been Spider-Man a very brief time. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, part of his whole personality in the comics is his jovial laughter. It's – but here they they but as the scene you're talking about they they let us in to see that you know all of that laughing and humor and teasing and joking and positivity is really his defense mechanism. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. you know that's how he's coping. Yes, yeah. it's coping. I suppose coping mechanism is a better better term to use. I'm sure but, we'll um, probably hear or see more of that in No Way Home because from yeah, from yeah. the rumors and a lot of people are speculating it's even more and more that we're getting three Spider-Men and uh I'm looking forward to that. Uh I would love to see Yeah, I, I hope they do that. I uh, I mean um you know, I, I it, it's it's really hard to tell. You yeah. know, they, they they and they do a great job, you know. I mean, they and and as a result things are unpredictable and unsure, you know, <laughs> when the when WandaVision came out, you know, everyone was convinced that it was Mephisto. Know, we were watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were watching the, the machinations of, of Mephisto and, and that he would be the big bad. And then, you know, it, it wasn't that at all. No. And then Falcon winter soldier came out and we're like, you know, the, the big crime boss there, or the, the, the deal maker, I can't remember their name. You know, is it the Kingpin? Is it this, per, you know, is yeah. it Red Skull? He's bad. The power broker, yeah. I guess is the power name, broker. right? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's going to be Red Skull, maybe blah, blah, blah. No, it was Agent Carter. So, yeah, uh, right. you know, or maybe a scrawl imposter. We don't. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> brought that but, up at um, one point, too. It would be interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so then Loki happens 
and we're like, okay, the man at the end of whatever, or the the one who remains, mm -hmm. right? The character yeah, the at one the who end. Remains, and yeah. you're like, yeah, this is going to be some old guy we've never met before, some alien character or something, because that's what it was in the comic. And it's not going to be anything big. Blah, blah, blah. And the doors open up, and there's Kang. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and you're like, oh, shit, they went there. You know what I mean? Yeah, finally did. Yep. They set us up yeah. two series in a row. And then we're like, okay, we know how this works. And then they said, no, no, you no. do not. You don't know how this works. <laughs> well, I, I kind of broke all that down with all the Easter eggs. And I, I think the last two episodes, Steve, and I was like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's Kang. It's Kang. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah. It, it, they named him something else, which, you know, well, he it, remains. It, it, he is. He is multiple different identities throughout the different mm -hmm. time periods. Yeah. And, right. Um, Right, and so which only clues us into twist. more getting the Fantastic Four in because he's related to the Reed yeah. Richards. So. Yeah, he's a distant relative so of, of Reed I'm, Richards. I'm, yeah. I can't wait for that. So uh, we have yeah. that little. I just to. read. I just read today. I don't know if you guys talked about it or covered it, but they just announced today four more dates for Marvel movies. Yes, they have. Um, oh no! They're yeah. All in, yeah, yeah, they're all in 2024. No, no indication of what they are. Oh, but, right. Okay. Uh, they're, they're 2024, so a lot of people are speculating the Fantastic Four is going to be one of them, maybe one of the X-Men, something like that. And I saw somebody somebody posted up a comment saying, I'll bet you anything that February date gets moved to April 4th, <laughs> 2020, 2024. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it'll be 4 24 yeah. Yeah. Great. We have to wait three years for that. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, yeah we have to wait three years to find out if that theory... I wonder if it, no one's going to remember. It's like, hold on. Uh, the only Fantastic Four movies I remember is that Roger Corman movies, those two other yeah. movies, and that really bad one, Josh Trank. <laughs> I, mean, like, I remember there was a podcast I was listening to three years ago that, um, that said that... They... <laughs> yeah, right? Some guy predicted it. What the hell? What was his name? Yeah, yeah. Manly of Kirk? He read it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> he read it on the internet. <laughs> very, very cool. Uh, but, yeah, Kirk, so what we're going to move on to is... Uh, Steve and I were moving into notes, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to continue on, and you could jump in if you want. Steve, where did you leave sure. off uh, on your last uh, one? I, I had finished all mine up. We were we were into your your notes. There, the oh, okay. We discussed. Uh, one note that I had from the episode that is pretty much like an Easter egg or something that references to something within the cinematic universe, uh, Kirk, that I liked was the giant slingshot that Peter does with his webs to get the train to start working. Yeah. yeah, it's yep. a basic full reversal of what had happened within Spider-Man 2, if you remember, with Tobey Maguire when he was trying to stop the train, the train. from Doc yeah. Ock. But, you know, in yeah. this case, he was doing it uh, for to help his friends, and he was putting his life in jeopardy from the, the zombies at hand, and I thought that was a pretty unique and very cool thing. It showed the tensile strength of his webs, too, by the way. It was a nice uh, echo yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, the next one I had was Hope Van Dyne went all giant woman within the episode, but succumbed to being eaten and turned into a zombie giant woman. Yeah. And, you know, this was in the comic as well, but Hank did the same with T'Challa. And I mentioned it before, but with him eating, but he also ate Galactus and he was a giant zombie at that point, too. So if you recall, <laughs> and he was one of the leading factions of it between him, Hulk and Cap and everybody else. Because they were the original Avengers and they were leading that. And just like in the in the comic itself, they were pretty much, unlike within the, the show, the comic versions were conscious of themselves, had a, um, uh, they knew what they were doing, they knew who they were before, but they just had that hunger and they were just constantly uh, deteriorating. But they were just basing it on that hunger. Whereas this, they're just straight out zombies, which is kind of a cool twist. And I, I like well, they're that. zombies, but they have their superpowers, they, and they know, and they're conscious of using them. You do see Wanda though right. showing affection or emotion at the very end as a, a zombie when Vision's gone. She goes crazy, and right, and right. it showed that there, she held on to something. She couldn't vocalize it, so I guess they didn't right. want to pay uh, Olsen. 
money to come in and voice something as a zombie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, she was busy. She's busy. Uh, she just finished filming. I read the other day. Oh yeah. Um, for Doctor Strange. So oh, okay. she, I don't know. I don't know when all this was. This dialogue was done probably yeah. years ago. That is probably um, probably over a year and a half ago, if anything. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to just jump back quick. Did you notice in that sequence that you were just going over a minute ago with um, Peter, uh, um, Spider-Man trying to do the train with his, his webs? Yeah. The zombies come up from behind him. Yes. Mm -hmm. And almost get him mm -hmm. before. And he, so the spider sense just not happening. Not happening at all. Yeah. Right. Not happening Maybe at he all, didn't. Almost. Maybe yeah. in this particular world, he doesn't have spider sense. Yeah. Maybe. It's <laughs> just an interesting, yeah, that's an interesting thing that thought. was left I hadn't, out. Hadn't, yeah, I hadn't thought about yeah, that. Same here. Uh, one other that I liked was the buses and the train cars that Peter uses to make a fort with his webbing within the city was just remarkable. But as it also just reminded me of the uh, Sam Raimi trailer that we were supposed to get that we never got, but you have seen on YouTube or you probably have seen in deleted scenes of when Spidey had webbed up the uh, a bunch of burglars or thieves within a helicopter between the World Trade Center. The tow towers, yeah. Yes. Towers, but yeah. in this case, they used trains, buses, and everything. But what was that to stop Falcon Zombie to come in and, do and fly in, you know? But I thought it was a, a cool <laughs> point because we got to see something of his power, his tensile strength, and what he could do. Just like with an yeah. trailer that we never were able to have because of uh, 9 11, unfortunately. What about the death sequence for the Falcon zombie? Oh, oh God. <laughs> that, yeah. was pretty, that was pretty intense, man. She cut him totally in half. Yes. Yeah, that was this that one. Was this one was the this one we got the most gore. I think it still was. It wasn't oh, a lot of gore. No, but they toned we it did down. Get some, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, did you like the future Rama reference with uh, Ant Man or uh, Scott Lang? I, I didn't. I, I, I'm not a future Rama uh, oh, follower. So he's got the head, no, and he's. I, I missed that. But it's also uh, it's also a reference to Mars Attacks, if you can remember, because they Mars, had the, yes, the head in the yeah. you know. Yeah, but, in the bottles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, in but in this case, he's flying away, and he he I forget what he states from Harry Potter, but it was a spell for levitation. Uh, but I I thought that was pretty now, funny. The, that is pretty funny. I loved the, the the fact that the cape was a character. Yes, mm -hmm. and it wasn't like no, that in the I mean, comics at all. No, he, no, he was, was he? I don't think it was even in the comics. No, but um, they treat him. They treat, and I, I say him, it, her, um, mm -hmm. like it, you know, like a character. They do it in the movies as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. It has personality. It has, you know, consciousness. It, it knows when, you know, the people are threatened and it jumps into action. And, yeah. um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I think there's more to that. Yeah. You know, I'm looking forward to like more. Maybe of it. it's this, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe there's a spirit uh, that's, you know, encapsulize that that cape. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, towards the end, we love to go into quotes. So, uh, Steve, what do you have for quotes? Uh, the first one I've got is uh, the Kurt guy who I didn't realize he was from Ant-Man. I I'm not, I haven't rewatched the movies so many times, but uh, when he says, your robot arm is waterproof, how handy, pun intended, I thought was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he always talked about the Baba Yaga. Too, which was part yeah, of his like yeah. information too, which is so funny. Which, but that's another great, another great character that you would not see, you know, mm -hmm. uh, participating in you know much of the story in any movie. Mm. But here, you could give them, you know, a full, you know, partnership in the team, and uh, it, it was great. Yeah, uh, Baba Yaga, by the way, is is the two twofold. One is is a character. Well, there's the the actual mythological character, um, but in literature and everything else mm -hmm. in history. But in the comics, in Hellboy, Baba Yaga is a villain of Hellboy's. Oh, okay. But more importantly, ah, Baba cool. Yaga is what they call John Wick. 
Um, actually, <laughs> actually, <laughs> which John, yes, that's not what they call yes, John is. Wick. But it's also John it's Wick about is a witch. Not the Baba Yaga. John Wick is the one you send to kill the Baba Yaga. He's the one you sent to kill the boogeyman. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. So apparently Steve has yeah. been listening yeah. to Adrenaline Cinema <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> and I don't listen to myself as well, I reference myself. having watched the Resurrection uh, <laughs> Matrix preview, Oof. I'm now I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if um, John Wick is just Neo trapped inside the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense that would be cool it's a movie inside a movie yeah, inside a go. movie all right so keanu plays this and this <laughs> all right uh we already mentioned it before uh bucky's saying sorry pal i guess this is the end of the line which references all the lines within the captain america unit yeah uh, movies. that's one of my favorites from the, first, the first two as Shuma, it did, did yeah, i'm sorry let favorite. me interrupt did steve did you say shuma gorath what for what is the villain with the tentacle that's the name of the i thought maybe one of you said that shuma gorath you were right if you did if not then I'm, no i think you i think you tried to say it you tried to say it in you yeah uh, <laughs> you try to say it, so, so we'll you, 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 you heard yourself. I, I got nothing. I know that you like got said, the credit, podcast dude. did say it, but I had no clue what the name was. I, I wasn't going to even try to repeat it. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the character yeah. that uh, uh, has the remember. tentacles and uh, is from an alternate universe and is a dark god and wrote the um, the dark hold book. Uh, my next quote is uh, is just when Hope after she uh, she says, "Guys, I'm covered in Sharon." So. Oh, that was great. <laughs> that was great. That was good. <laughs> the, the 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 actual episode needed levity, I think, really do. And I said it before because I think a lot of people are trying to watch yeah. this with families. So they're trying to have some sort of huge demographic so to uh like suffocate some of the violence or the gore, they yeah. put humor into it, which kind of eases it up a little bit like with the blam 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 thing from happy yeah he's shooting yeah. from the uh the 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 special uh repulsor the hand line. repulsor that tony used civil from uh yeah. civil war at that point yep so he's doing that and then he comes back and he's like <laughs> blah, blah, as he turns so he got that uh, also, like with Scott Lang saying, "Oh, watch out! She's a man eater." There, I'm doing it again, and that's when Wanda right. comes into the room when she's all zetted out. Yeah, that's all I got when it came to uh, quotes. But uh, I honestly, I think it equaled out between the drama, the humor, and the gore, just to make it a decent overall yeah. family thing. Obviously, you wouldn't show it to your yeah, nine-year-old right. child. Right probably the demographic would be 12 and up uh, my, i would think my last one is when when t'challa and um uh, bucky walk into the room and they they explain what vision's been doing scott Lane, scott says well in vision's defense i got nothing so, <laughs> just, <laughs> just, you know vision saved his life you know apparently but uh ahead yeah but now he's just stuck Ahead, so he could give good head. Um, oh. <laughs> That's not very family friendly. <laughs> well, we're not family friendly. We say this is for adults I'm anyway, teasing. so we have fun I'm, with it. We I'm can say teasing. whatever we want, man. So, Kirk, one <laughs> of the things. You know, oh, go all right. No, go ahead. Um, I was just going to comment on the fact that um, we were talking about the fact that Doctor Strange, the su Supreme Strange. Mm -hmm. um is still is still alive mm -hmm. um and that 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 episode yeah. ended in such a way that we could see that character coming again um agent carter is going to pop through and everything else i think this ended in a way that lends itself to a sequel absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. for sure oh, yeah and i yeah. think we will absolutely. see that yeah. i think we will see yeah. that next season because they have been uh renewed for a second season already um this uh i read that a couple like a month or so ago yeah. and um yeah yeah, yeah season and, two and uh, yeah. i wouldn't be surprised if they did it did it again only you know then bring in a whole new cast of 
characters they've got. To, you could have some cosmic, you know, mm-hmm. you could introduce cosmic characters, Guardians oh. of the Galaxy and stuff like that, because you've got to fight Thanos, you know? Right. Um, no, or no, Nova. I don't know if they'll introduce any anybody that's not already been introduced in the MCU. That, that would be interesting if they did. That yeah. would be an interesting take. So that way they could have a voice actor do it and they can necessarily just hire somebody who's yeah. completely different for the live action and then be like, okay, well, this is a different universe. So, okay, this is the hmm. live action. I wonder action if they'll MCU. do that. That would be cool. That I would, would love cool. to see them do that. I don't know if they will, but I, I would love to see them do that. I mean, in a, sense, in a sense, they're doing that if they bring any of these alternate universe versions like Captain Carter, that's kind of creating a new character and then bringing it hmm. into the MCU. But, but I wonder if they, they'll ever if they would take the risk to introduce an additional character and, yeah. on, in this format yeah. and then bring them to live action. I don't know. Well, it's, we'll yeah. Well, we never got to see Adam Warlock after. Yeah. Guardians I think he'll 2, be in so Guardians three. We got to have him some point. Yeah. yeah. Which would be cool. Hopefully yeah, who knows? Be sooner than later. <laughs> James Gunn is still thriving on the, the yeah, Suicide I loved, Squad, I which loved I it. really yeah, enjoyed. Yeah, I, I thought, thought it was great, but it, uh, it's not a Marvel movie. <laughs> no, no, yeah. not at all. Not at all. No, not at all. <laughs> so Kirk, not at ahead, all. Good, Mark. No, I was just, I was just going to, it kind of explain the format here of, of what we do as we're wrapping up, we kind of go into podcast recommendations. If there's anything you're listening to that you think, uh, the, the listeners would find interesting. Um, do you have any podcasts that you might want to recommend? Um, you know, sadly, I, I haven't been doing a lot of pod, podcast listening uh, of late. I kind of went through a period of, of doing that a lot and then um, uh, and then kind of got out of it. Hmm. So I, I don't have any podcasts really. I mean, I, I love, uh, you know, a lot of different kinds of things. You know, obviously, I listen to a, a bunch of Jason's uh, podcasts and I'm sure you guys are followers of that. And uh, but any any general um, recommendations yep. you would have for our listeners that you would recommend for them? I, I'm a big fan of Michael Rappaport's podcast. I don't know if you I haven't listened to it in a, in a couple months, but I used to listen to it. You know, religiously. I don't love everything you know he says, but a lot of what you know how he approaches things and he's just it just cracks me up. You know, he just he okay. makes me laugh and um, politically I tend to to find myself in sync with him. Uh, in general, in terms of podcasts or in general, podcasts or well? yeah, anything YouTube, YouTube channels, anything other creators. You know, I've really gotten into uh, when I'm when I'm drawing. Uh, I go through different periods, you know. And as an illustrator, you you, you uh, I think most artists spend a lot of time listening to music, and it's often inspirational. And you know, I listen to uh, a, a wide diversity of you know from classical to rap to um, but I also, you know, love listening to like movie music, that, you know, things like the Inception soundtrack or um, the Batman soundtracks. And, you know, they, they, they just, uh, they help focus my energies. But um, so that's a high recommendation. But uh, I listen to a lot of blues and uh, that's been, been playing a lot for me lately. But, a t- you know, I get, sometimes I get hmm. bored with, with the music and I, if I put on something that I want to watch, that becomes problematic because then I start right, <laughs> start right watching it right. and not working. You know, <laughs> you're so watching it. I found a kind of in between, which is I'm 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 really into science, and um, there's tons of these great you know YouTube uh, scientists or scientists who are on YouTube talking about you know um, a lot of the new astronomical discoveries and. Um, mysteries that are unfolding and and uh, you know there's so much going on in the world right now with the pandemic um, with politics um, with uh, global warming and the environment and and the there's so much to 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 distract us from any other kind of things that are going on you know and we, we tend to be very at least in this house kind of focused on a couple of major issues and we've spent all our time thinking and talking about that stuff. But as a result, there's all this futuristic discoveries and, and evol- the science that's going on that I don't think people are necessarily aware of, but the ask, you know, in, the astrophysics has just exploded. No, no. 
Um, and the things that we're discovering in the, um, whether it's, you know, um, Earth-like planets or um, dark energy and, you know, find, you know understanding dark matter and, and how that fills some of the equation that's been missing for forever about what makes up the universe. And so I, I, I have a few of these uh, scientist guys that I, I listen to their videos. They tend to be long and they kind of, it kind of drones in the background. <laughs> okay. And I just, I get, you know, when I hear, wow, that's cool. And I keep working and it's kind of back. It's almost, yeah, it's, it's really, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Cool. So <laughs> yeah, I recommend it, you know. Then yeah. you put on your Spotify <laughs> playlist yeah. after that too. Uh, uh, well, well, for me, the one the one that I jotted down tonight was uh, Strange Indeed, which is a podcastica podcast, and they should be finishing up their coverage of Sweet Tooth this week. That's our friends Pake and Rima who uh, uh, are, are covering Sweet Tooth on Strange Indeed. Yeah, I started watching that. I I think there's I think I have three episodes left, or two two or three episodes left, probably just two. It had me so strong in the first three, three, four episodes, three episodes. And then I just felt like it became, it mm -hmm. kind of lost its, its direction for me. And I couldn't stay with it. Um, I don't know if it picked up again or. Um, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I, I've enjoyed this rewatch and I've been sending them voicemails. So I, I, I enjoy it. Yeah. Good. Hmm. Well, for me, it would be the continued coverage of What If from House Podcast and TV Podcast Industries. So uh, I hope that they recommend us as we do for them and their points of views with the, the show's ad adaptations of these uh, these characters. So, yeah, I, uh, I, I just like listening to their different takes. So I've been keeping up with that lately, and that's been fun. And to uh, submit your feedback, well, we can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice that you use. If ratings are available, please give us a rating or review if possible on any of those platforms. We really would appreciate it. You can check out our Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. And you can check out our website. Panels to pixels dot com, uh, podcast dot com, panels to pixels podcast dot com, and uh, it's currently down now. But I'm hoping after my move and the changes, I'll settle down and I'll sit down and take over <laughs> and get something out there for you, just to uh, pinpoint and reference and hopefully get some of the podcasts uh, played onto that as well. Mark, I'd love to um, to plug uh, something that that I'm working sure. on right Absolutely, now. Sure, absolutely. Please all right. go ahead. You know, with the COVID and the the um, conventions having been on hold, um, you know, I I've been doing a lot of other things and haven't been um, doing a lot of uh, what people kind of got used to to seeing of me, which was episodes of The Walking Dead mm -hmm. um, done in tribute format as illustrations, um, episodic versions. And um, so there, there was the pandemic show was going to happen um, uh, in September on the 17th, 18th and 19th. Yes. And I was scheduled to go there and I was preparing a lot of new stuff to bring to that. Um, I, don't, I don't know, a lot, a number of pieces. And uh, um, so I've put together, a, a, you know, I'm going to try and do a whole release weekend tribute um, event. Awesome. Coming up. Um, I've been doing some teasers, posted about it. I haven't announced yet the exact, it's it going to be here in September. It's coming up this weekend. I'm going to, you know, post up some, some details about when it's coming and kind of what's, what's going to be involved. And, but uh, I hope people will, will look out for that. Follow me on Twitter at at Batman KM or Instagram at at Batman KM or go to my website, studio .com. Mm -hmm. Um There'll be information there as well about it, but um It'll be a, it should be fun. I'm going to release, you know, different pieces each day uh, over a three day weekend period and uh, have some special deals and opportunities to get package deals and also get um, incentives like original sketches and original drawings. If you, you know, buy certain packages or whatever. So awesome. it should be a lot awesome. of fun. Yeah, we, I, know we, I, I have yeah. absolutely loved your heroes getting vaccinated uh, <laughs> Twitter from Batman, uh, Batman KM. So. Well, I haven't given up on that. I'm still, I, I was cranking out for a period there, almost two a week and then down to one a week. And it's been a couple of weeks since I've done one, but uh, I'm kind of focused on getting these pieces done now for this 
this uh, TWD tribute art nice. weekend. But um, uh, I will get back to that because sadly, um, there's still need for people to, uh, to take seriously the uh, the importance of getting vaccinated. So, yeah. Uh, so then there's still a need for well, it. Well, all links will be provided below on your podcast player choice on our notes for uh, where you could reach out to Kirk and get his artwork or go to his website and purchase. So keep that in mind, everybody. Just check that out. We will be providing that as well as in our Facebook as well. The scientist that I follow on YouTube that I rec was recommending is Anton Petrov. Ooh. Um, so if people want to look to Anton, A-N-T-O-N, Petrov, P-E-T-R-O-V. Cool. Um, he's got, uh, some fantastic, uh, some fantastic pieces. I recommend people check out. Awesome. We also have an email address where you can send us an email at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The two is spelled out right in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. And you can find us on YouTube if you search Panels to Pixels Podcast. And just please give us a thumbs up or subscribe to us if you like the content there. A lot of people like to listen to us on YouTube, it seems. <laughs> next week, we will be covering the next episode of What If. Thank you so much, Kirk, uh, for being with us yeah. tonight. Yeah. Uh, it was my pleasure, guys. I appreciate no it. Problem, Do you have man. anything else that you want to plug before we get to our signing off here? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I think uh, yeah. I think that's good. I appreciate the opportunity to, to let people know about that event that's coming up. No and problem. To start uh, you know, looking for that, and um, and it's a pleasure. I, I love talking about uh, Marvel and comics and animation and film. So anytime you you uh, you want me back on, absolutely. Let me know. I'm going to be problem. needing a co-host here in a, a few weeks when Mark's <laughs> in, in the dark in, in the basement for a little while. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm in the <laughs> process of moving, and I'm going to be moving from two different places uh, till I settle in someplace. So uh, yeah, so Steve will have uh, an open chair, as it were, and I uh, to okay. Fill. So if you're if you're more than willing, you're more than welcome. So. Okay, sounds good. And where else can be in touch? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And where else can uh, listeners hear us? Well, I can be heard on the Adrenaline Cinema podcast on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network, where we cover action films, adventure films, and suspense films. Uh, also on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network, you could also see Mr. Kirk Manley's artwork because there are always links at piratecoreentertainment.com. So check that out and check out where you could find Kirk's artwork so you could submit some sort of work for him to do for you. You know, you you, uh, you do a lot of commission sales, I notice, at conventions, Kirk. So <laughs> a lot of people love sure. your stuff. I love it. I have a ton of it at home. Actually, right now it's packed. <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate that. But, appreciate that. And we will be asking you probably in a later date to do the Adrenaline Cinema podcast artwork as well. So to sure. complete it. That'd be that'd be great. Which you have already done for Pirate Core Entertainment. So check that out, people, ladies and gentlemen. It's amazing. And all you guys know that I'm a pirate fan. <laughs> and as always, I send voicemails to various different podcasts that I listen to and uh, that people appreciate hearing me talk i don't know i guess i think steve when i was on with jason um for the ver the first episode of what uh -huh. if uh you were the only voice question uh that we had <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah for that first one i think yeah, that was the, the only voice one mail, yeah and now everybody else is jumping on board yeah, it so. was great but he live steves it was yeah, awesome he live steve so he he got to listen to his other stuff on other podcasts when he he talks about the movie or the show or whatever they're talking about and he's watching it and he's giving his perspective as he sees it and it verbally. And it's it's fun to, to listen to because it's a different format. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I give about a two minute uh, a two minute running commentary uh, as I'm watching the show because that's easier for me than to at the very end try to throw everything together. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that was our show tonight. I just want to thank Kirk Manley for being on and hanging out with us. I know it was a bit late. It was Absolutely. a little rush, but we had a good time, and you brought no a great cool insight, and I, we can't thank you more than enough, <laughs> and you are more than welcome to come back, sir. So, Oh, thank you very much. It was a pleasure being here, and I'd, I'd love to come cool. back. Cool. Awesome. So with that, I'm Mark. I'm Steve. 
I'm Kirk. And this was Panels <laughs> to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. All right, guys. Take care. Good night. Good night. Good night.